mirror, mirror on the wall. Let us be grateful to the mirror for revealing to us our appearance only. There are days where I don't look, feel, or even smell righteous. I am the one who looks in the mirror and sees the wrinkles, the extra pants, and the thousand other areas that need improving. I know my areas of temptation, my anger, and my tendency to be self-centered because of uh, what I see and because of what I feel, but uh, me sometimes. I have trouble believing I am in Christ, not because I don't know Him, but because I know me. Thankfully, my identity is not based on appearances, feelings, or behavior, neither in yours. It's all about what God says about you. His word is the true mirror that shows you who you are in Him, just a new reflection. I am very loved. I am adequate in Christ. I have the Spirit's power. God rejoices over me. The world knows us from the inside out. The world, for of course, teaches us to look at the external. For example, when the Jews were in need of a king, Samuel went looking and he found some impressive specimens but God knows but knew better but the Lord said to Samuel do not consider his appearance on his height for I have re rejected him the Lord does not look at the things man looks at man looks at the outward experience, uh, appearance but the Lord looks at the heart sure your old heart was wicked and dead but now when the lord looks at your heart he sees the new heart given in christ a heart that has been made pure and alive that's why the mirror of the world and not the mirror of the world tells you who you are jesus I embrace your mirror of truth today. In faith, I hold on to the truth about who I am in you, regardless of appearances and feelings. Bring a specific truth to my mind today that I might be a living reflection of you to the world. Amen. This is kind of messy. You are not perfect. So what? Are you a messy person? The truth is we are all messy people this world. And yet we try to hide our mess by it in a closet so no one will see just how unchecked we really are. Ever wonder what Jesus might think of your messy life? What will Jesus do? Jesus didn't come to make you tidy. He came to make you new. You are not helpless or hopeless. Despite how the world might make you feel, Jesus is willing and ready to rescue you from the struggles in your life and give you power to carry on. The devil made you do it. It's later than it's ever been. In the 70s, a popular comedian, Philip Wilson, came up with a great tagline. He would do something wrong, get coughed, and emphatically use this excuse. The devil made me do it. Before we knew about our identity in Christ, it would have been easy to use the same excuse. When we mess up, just blame Satan, the world, and the old sinful nature in us, right? No. This old way of thinking is absolute and irrelevant. Being in Christ opens the door to a whole different mood of ex existence. Living a love of obedience to Him is just being true to you 
are in him your identity was settled at the cross the life you will live now is not your own it belongs to christ you are his child and you have become his righteous you still can sin but the power of sin to control you is now gone the battle between good and evil has already been won this was done on the cross hey satan is still alive and well on planet earth i don't doubt that for a moment he has an iq of about a billion and an army of fallen angels carrying out his shit schemes before we were in christ and before we understood who we are in christ satan kept our heads spinning with his lies no more you dear children are from god and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world now that we have been set free with truth he can't make us do anything on the other hand when we rest in Christ and trust in his presence in us the righteousness of God becomes our experience i can do all things through him who gives me strength now when you walk in righteousness you can rightfully proclaim christ christ made me do it Jesus I praise you that you are in me and that you are greater than Satan who is in this world I rest in that truth I lay all of my choices I will make today at your feet as I make them one by one I trust that will move through me to make my actions and my words a reflection of the righteousness of God that is in me because you are in me amen your nature or your nurture love among men is awakened by something in the beloved but the love of god is free spontaneous un- unevoked uncaused god loves men because he has chosen to love them believe it or not there is a controversy going on that is even older than whether we should sing more hymns or more courses in church it's the nature we as nurture debate there's a lot of discussion in our culture about why people do the things they do especially bad things for some reason they don't seem to be to in consent concern when humans actually do good things some say it's the way we were nurtured parents people and environment determine how we turn out others say it's a, our nature our genetic physical mental makeup determines whether we will be naughty or nice this christmas season trust me it's one of the oldest debates on the planet and if you dwell on it too long your your head is bound to explode i say time out let it go what difference does it make if it's nature or nurture once we become christian and are placed in christ we get that new heart the new nature but that new nature needs to be nurtured as well amazingly we now live in the family of the best nurturer in the universe what marvelous love the father has extended to us just look at it we are called children of god that's who we really are so get this he's given you a new nature and now as his kid he's going to perfectly nurture you so that you can walk in his righteousness 
you have the heart, you have the father, what's left to debate. My awesome, perfect father, I receive the love that you are thanks for my new nature in Christ. I entrust it to you now. I give you full access and full permission to nurture me as no human could ever do. Amen. Keeping in a step with the Spirit, nothing before, nothing behind, the steps of faith fall on the seeming void and find the rock beneath. I love that short poem. It was a favorite of Hudson Taylor, an English missionary who took a huge step of faith to take the good news about Christ to China in 1854. The steps of faith fall on the seeming void. Applying a new truth about who you are in Christ is a step of faith like that it never feels natural. It might even feel like inching out onto ice or jumping from an airplane or as a tailor situation. Sailing from your homeland into the complete unknown. No, there is nothing natural about the feeling at first. to cross Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires since we live by the spirit let us keep in a step with the spirit the spirit lives and the spirit leads because of your new nature in Jesus that means that it is more natural for you to walk in holiness than to walk in sin no matter what does first upward steps feel like. Do you hear me? That's really important. It's more natural for you to make the right choice than to make the wrong one. When you make the right choice, it's not, wow, can you believe it? I did the right things. It's to be expected now. Yeah. Celebrate what Christ is doing through you, but get used to it. It's normal now to make the right choice in the power of the Spirit because that's who you are. How is the Spirit nudging you to take a new step of faith today? Give it a try. It may feel like jumping into an endless pot but you will find the rock beneath. Holy Spirit, by faith, I want to keep in a step with you. May the reality of you in me translate into action through me. It feels unsafe and scary, but I trust in you as I learn to walk in new way today. Amen.